What's crack like in FST? Today we're going to be talking about permutations, combinations, and the fundamental counting principle. Um, this is the first section in chapter 11. Um, shouldn't be too bad, so we're going to get on right with it. This is the warm-up. If you would like to pause the video and try this, you can. You don't have to because this is an example of the fundamental counting principle, and we're going to get into this in a minute, but you see this all the time on your ACTs and stuff like that. Um, essentially, we got, you know, s someone is ordering some food, they have a bunch of different types of cheese, meat, toppings, blah, 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 and you want to figure out how many options are possible. But again, we're going to get into that a little later because that's actually the fundamental counting principle. All right, so we're going to move on here. Um, these are some warm-ups if you want to do them in your calculator. Uh, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, blah, 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 12 times 11 times 10. There's actually a shorter way to do this. And I'm going to tell you what that is right now, right? Because I don't want you to waste time. So you can do something like this, 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 and all that. It's actually called a factorial. A factorial. And the symbol for that in your calculator is just an exclamation point. Now I want to show you how to actually do this in your calculator. So if I were to do 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, blah, 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 all the way to 1, really what that is, that is 12 factorial. All a factorial means is that a number times a number less than that times a number 1 less than that, so on and so forth, all the way until you get to 1. So if I want to type in 12 factorial into my calculator, it's actually not too bad. The steps are I'm going to hit math. And then I'm going to scroll over to the right. You should see a little tab there that says PRB. That is your probability tab. That's all your uh, permutation combination stuff that you're actually going to be doing today. So really get used to that. You're going to hit math. You're going to go over to PRB. And then you'll see some different options you can uh, select. I think the fourth one down will be your factorial. Okay? So that's how you do factorials. You're not really going to do those a lot. Um, there are factorials and permutations and combinations, but what we're going to be talking about, but I'm going to give you the shortcut to do that so you don't have to do the long formula. All right? If you want to pause the video and try that out, go for it. If not, we're going to keep cruising. All right? So here we go. We're going to talk about factorials, blah, 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 blah. Here are your learning objectives today. You're going to be able to use fundamental counting principle. You're going to be able to calculate permutations and combinations. And most importantly, you're going to be able to tell me when to use permutation, when to use combination, and when to use counting principle. And that's probably the hardest thing to do in this section. But all in all, it's not too bad. So let's get started. Um, fundamental counting principles. If you want to pause the video and read all this math stuff, you can. I, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you, but really what this is, is we're going to use fundamental counting principle whenever we have, whenever we're trying to select like how many different options of something there are, like how many different car styles, how many different um, entrees you could order at a restaurant if you order like a side and a drink and a dessert and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so an example of that is right here. How many different lunch options are there if you have two different entree options three different side options, and three dessert options. How many different meals could you come up with? It's really this simple, guys, for fundamental counting principle. You can literally just take your options, two for the entrees, times three side options, times your three dessert options, and multiply all those numbers together, and that's going to be the answer. So two times three times three is going to be 18. So there are 18 options you can come up with given this situation. That's all fundamental counting principle is. Not too bad. Okay, if you'd like to pause it and kind of go back over what I said, go for it. If not, we're going to carry on here. So this is an example. So we want to use fundamental counting principle to try to come up with how many different car choices there are. Now, I'm going to take a step off to the side. If you'd like to work on this on your own right now, go ahead and pause the video and try to solve it. If not, I'm going to go ahead and solve, solve this one for you so you can see the solution. All right. 
So we have two different styles, a sedan or a hatchback. Um, we have five different colors available, three models. How many different options for this kind of car can we come up with? So it's really just going to be my two different styles. So two times my five different colors times my three different models. And that's going to be two times five is 10. 10 times three is 30. So 30 different options. And that's it. The bells are still going even though no one's in the building. That's cool. So that's it for, for fundamental counting principle. Not too bad. We're going to move on here. Okay, permutations. Permutations is when we are selecting something from a group, but the order matters. I cannot say that enough. Order matters, okay? This is the formula for permutations. Kinda ugly. We're not going to use this formula. I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator. But what if you want to know what the formula is, it's just saying the number of options you're choosing from factorial divided by the number of options you're choosing from however many you're choosing at a time factorial, and that's it. I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator right now. So you definitely want to pay attention to what I'm about to say. In order to do this in your calculator, you know what the best way we're going to do this is to do an example, okay? So something like this. How many ways can a student government select president, vice president, secretary, and a treasurer from a group of six people? So order matters here, right? If I said so-and-so is president and, you know, we'll just use random names. If Johnny is president and Emily is vice president, that is a different ball game than if Emily is president and Johnny is vice president, right? If uh, Joe Exotic is president and Carol Baskin is treasurer, that's something totally different than Carol Baskin being president and Joe Exotic being treasurer, right? So order matters. I'm selecting people for each specific role. So here we go. We're going to use a permutation here, and it's denoted with NPR. N stands for the number of people we are selecting from. So notice we are selecting from a group of six people. So it's going to be six. P stands for permutation. And how many people am I selecting? Well, if you think about it, I'm selecting a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. So that's four total people. So it would be 6P4. Now I'm going to show you how to do that in the calculator right now okay here's how you are going to do this you need to begin by typing six into your calculator then you are going to go to math prb remember we talked about that and you're going to select npr when you're done with that then you are going to write four and then hit enter. And it should look like this in your calculator. Okay. I actually need to run and grab a calculator real quick just so we can do this. So again, I'm going to hit six math, go over to the PRB tab, NPR, which is the second one down. And then I'm going to hit a four and I get a total of 360 ways that that could happen, okay? So that's basic permutations. I'm not gonna go through all these examples. If you'd like to pause the video and go through some of these examples, you're more than welcome. I'll go through maybe one more. Um, let's just go, second one, how many ways can I rank 10 types of candy from favorite to least favorite? Well. Obviously, order matters, right? If my favorite is this one and my least favorite is this one, that is an order, right? I'm putting them in order. So how many candies do we have to choose from? Looks like we have 10 types of candy. Obviously, order matters, so it's going to be a permutation. And I am selecting all 10 pieces of candy at a time, right? I'm not just going to out of 10 pieces, 10 different types of pieces of candy. I'm not just selecting five of them to rank. I'm selecting all 10 of them to rank. 
So go ahead and put that in your calculator. 10 math PRB NPR 10. And I'm getting a ginormous number. 3, 6, 2, 8, 8, 0, 0. So that's how many different ways we could rank our top types of candy. All right. One other really important thing before I move on to combinations, your n value right here, your n value should always be greater than or equal to your r value. That is to say, this number in front should always be at least this number, at least as big as this number, if not greater. If that is not the case, you're going to get an error message. So make sure you're watching out for that. Cool, let's keep moving. Uh, we just did some questions. I'm gonna post this PowerPoint so you can go through all these examples if you want. Um, but we're gonna move on to combinations just because I don't wanna overwhelm you with a long video. Here is those steps that I was referring to because it's a lot easier than doing all this. So don't worry about this. Okay, just go ahead and use your steps. Moving on, combinations. Combinations are a lot like permutations, except combinations order does not matter. Okay, order does not matter. So for example, say out of a class of 25 students, I want to select a group of five to go get some resources or scissors or something, calculators from somewhere else in the school. Do I care who I pick first, second, third, fourth, fifth? No. I'm just talking about a group of students, so order does not matter. If you want the formula for combinations, it's right here. Again, you probably guessed this, but we're not going to go ahead and punch all that in there because that's disgusting. We're going to use our calculator instead. Okay, calculators save time. Time is money. Anyone that's ever had me as a student before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go through some examples here of combinations, right? So here we go. First one. And how many ways can a group of five players on the uh, boys' uh, basketball team can be chosen from 14 players? Am I saying order matters? Am I saying that Ronnie needs to be picked first, Joey needs to be picked second? No, I'm just saying I need a group of five of them. So that tells me I'm going to use a combination. How many players am I choosing from? 14, so that's your n value, right? We have ncr, right? So I'm choosing 14 players to choose from. We said it's a combination because order doesn't matter. And how many people am I selecting? I'm selecting five. So when we do this in our calculator, it's going to be the same thing with permutations, except you're going to go ahead and select combination instead. So you're going to go, well, you're going to hit 14, and then you're going to hit math. PRB, and then you're going to select NCR, and then you're going to select 5, and then hit enter. Okay, same thing as before, but now you're, you're going to select combination instead. Okay, students generally have a hard time determining between combination and permutation, and it just takes practice. All right, Let's just do one more example here. I'll do the third one. Um, if you want, you can always pause the video and do more examples. Plus, if these aren't enough examples for you guys, there's tons of resources on the internet. Just go Google combinations and permutations. But here we go. How many school color combinations are there if each school chooses three colors from 10 color options? Again, the word combination is actually in here, so that makes it easy. But do I care which color I pick first? No, I just need to pick three. How many colors are there to choose from? Uh, looks like 10 color options to choose from. We know it's a combination. I'm selecting three at a time, whatever that is. Let's do it in the calculator. 10, math, PRB, NCR, three, enter. 120 ways this could happen. All right, so that's combinations. So, so far in this video, we've covered fundamental counting principle, permutations and combinations. We're just going to do a couple of practice questions here to be able to tell which one to use and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, so these are more combination questions. 
If you want to pause the video and go through all this, you can. We just kind of talked about it, so it's not too big of a deal. But if you want to pause, go for it now. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving on. These are some general vocabulary um, kind of hints that might tell you which one is a permutation, which one is a combination. I would definitely write these down. All your guys' Canvas quizzes and tests and everything this quarter are going to be open note. So you might as well have it in front of you, right? Let's just be smart about it. So these are going to be the questions that you're going to see on assessments, and you need to be able to tell which one is which. All right, so let's just go through these examples together, and then we'll wrap this video up. A teacher is passing out first, second, and third place prizes for the best student actor in a production of Hamlet. If there are 14 students in the class, how many different ways can the awards be presented? Think about it. The teacher is passing out first, second, and third place prizes. That means order matters. I know for a fact I would want to get first place. So for me getting first place instead of me getting second place, those are two different things, right? So order matters. That means we're going to use permutations here. And how you would enter that in your calculator is there's 14 students in the class. Permutation uh, looks like first, second, and third places. So we're selecting three at a time. So you'd enter that into your calculator. Now you don't have to do that for this question, but if you wanted to, you could. Let's look at the second one here. The soccer team is silk screening t-shirts. They have four different colors of t-shirts, two different colors of ink. How many different t-shirts can be made using ink color on a t-shirt? So it's not that I'm selecting anything from a group. It's I'm trying to figure out how many different t-shirt options are available. That's going to be fundamental counting principle. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to calculate that, that would just be the four different color t-shirts times the two different types of ink would be eight different options. And the last one, there are eight marbles in a bag. If they all, uh, if they are all different colors, how many groups of four marbles could you choose? That's a combination, right? I don't care about any order of selecting any color. I just want to know how many different combinations can I come up with? Well, there's eight to choose from. Combination, we said, four at a time. Throw that into your calculator. Eight math, PRB, four, and I'm getting 70. All right. That pretty much wraps up permutations, combinations, and fundamental counting principle. This is your assignment. Uh, if you want to copy it down right here, you can. It's also on Canvas. If you have any questions about any of this, guys, make sure you contact your teachers. We are more than happy to help you out. Other than that, Taryn out.